Classroom of the Elite Volume 1 Chapter 2 The Students of Class D On the second day of school, even though it was technically the first day of classes, the majority of the day was spent going over policies and rules. Many of the students had their expectations completely blown away by how nice and friendly the teachers were. Having already made a big commotion the other day, Pseudo was left alone as he slept like a log during class. The teachers noticed him sleeping but no one made an indication as to stop him. After all, deciding to listen to the lesson or not is our choice, so the teacher wasn't concerned. Is this how teachers interact with students that are no longer part of compulsory education? In this relaxed atmosphere, it soon became lunchtime. Getting up from their seats, the students started to go out to eat lunch with their acquaintances. I couldn't help but look in envy towards the others. Sadly, I wasn't able to make any close friends with my classmates. Pitiful. The only person who noticed my feelings sneered at me. What? What's pitiful? I want someone to invite me. I want to eat lunch with somebody. Your thoughts are really obvious. You're also by yourself. Don't you feel the same way? Or do you plan on staying alone for the next three years? Yes. I like being alone. She replied quickly, without any hesitation. It seems like she really feels that way. Instead of worrying about me, go worry about yourself. Well, after all, it wasn't me that proudly said that I couldn't make friends. To be honest, it seems like the near future will be troubling because I couldn't make any friends. After all, being alone also stands out. If I became the object of bullying, I would certainly be conspicuous. Not even a minute after the ball rang, half the class became empty. The people who are left either want to go better alone just like me, are sleeping and not paying attention, or like being alone like Horakita. I was thinking of going to eat, does anyone want to come with me? Harada said as he stood up. With that kind of thinking, he looks like a real Ryuju. I'd been waiting for my savior to come all along, it's a perfect chance for me. Harada, I'm coming now. Stealing my nerves, I slowly raised my hand. I'm going to Tilda. Me too, me too. When I saw Harada surrounded by girls, I put my hand back down. Why did those girls take my spot? That was my chance to be friends with him. Just because he's an Eichmann doesn't mean that you guys can thoughtlessly go to the cafeteria with him. How sad. Another derisive laugh and a disdainful look came from Horakita. Don't try to guess what other people are thinking. Is there anything else? Feeling a bit lonely from the lack of other boys, Harada looked around the room. When he spotted me, our eyes met. It's here. Harada noticed me. A man who wants you to invite him is here. After meeting Ice, his gaze locked onto me. As expected from the Ryaju, he understood my troubles. Um, I Inoko. Harada tried to call out my name, but at that moment. Harada-kun, hurry up. The girls took a hold of Harada's arms without noticing me at all. Ah, uh, Harada's gaze was stolen by the girls. Afterwards, he and the girls exited the classroom. The only thing that remained was my outstretched arm. Feeling embarrassed, I pretended I stretched my arm to scratch my head. Well then. Sending me one last look of pity, poor Akita left the classroom by herself. That was useless. Reluctantly, I stood up by myself and decided to go to the cafeteria all alone. If I don't feel like eating alone, I'll just go buy something at the convenience store. I know Koji-kun, right? 
On my way towards the cafeteria, I was suddenly stopped by a beautiful girl. She's Kushida, one of my classmates. Because it was the first time I looked at her from the front, my heart went doki doki. Straight, short brown hair that reached the top of the shoulders. It wasn't crude by any means, but the school recently approved shorter skirts, so it was obvious that her uniform was a newer one. In her hand was a pouch with a lot of key holders on it. I couldn't tell if she was carrying a pouch or if she was carrying a lot of key holders. I'm Kushida in the same class. Will you remember my name? Sure, I guess I can. What do you need from me? Actually, I would like to ask you something. It's a short question, but I know Koji Kun, by any chance, are you on good terms with Horikita san? We're not particularly close. Just acquaintances. Did she do something? It seems that when her goal was to ask about Horikita, I feel a bit sad. Oh, I see. Weren't you two getting along on the first day of school, though? I was asking everyone one by one for their contact info, but Horikita refused to tell me. That girl, what is she doing? If she was asked for her contact by an assertive girl like her, she could have helped me out and shared it with me. Afterwards, I might have have gotten familiar with the class. Also, on the day of the entrance ceremony, weren't you two talking to each other in front of the school? Considering that we were also on the same bus together, it's not surprising that she saw the two of us together. What kind of personality does Horikita have? Is she the type to only speak her mind to her close friends? Even though she wants to get to know Horikita, I can only listen to her questions but not answer any of them. I think she's not very good at interacting with others. Why do you want to know about Horikita? During the self-introductions, Horikita san walked out of the room, right? It looked like she didn't talk to anybody, so I was worried about her. She did say that she wanted to get along with everyone in her introduction. I understand, but I only met her yesterday, so I can't really help. Foon, so that's how it was. I thought you two were friends before coming to high school. Sorry for asking you a weird question out of the blue. No, it's fine. Why do you know my name, though? What didn't you introduce yourself? I made sure to memorize everyone's names. Kushida listened to my lame self-introduction. For some reason I feel really glad hearing that. Once again, let's get along well, Ayanoko Ji-kun. Although I felt a bit perplexed by her outstretched hand, I wiped my hands on my pants and then shook her hand. Nice to meet you too. Today was a lucky day. Even though there were some bad moments, there were also good ones. And since humans think conveniently, I quickly forgot about the bad moments of the day. Part 1 Eventually, after peeking through the cafeteria door, I decided to go to the convenience store, bought some bread, and returned to the classroom. A group of friends were eating with their desks next to each other, while there were various students quietly eating alone. The only thing common was that nearly everyone had a bento from either the convenience store or the cafeteria. I was going to start eating when I saw that Horikita had already returned to her seat. She had on her desk a sandwich that looked delicious. I returned to my seat without saying anything. When I was about to take my first bite of my bread, music started to play out of the speakers. Today, at 5 p.m. in Gymnasium No. 1, there will be a club fair. For those of you with an interest in clubs, please come to Gymnasium No. 1. I repeat today. A girl with a cute voice made an announcement over the PA. Clubs, her. I've never been in a club before. Hey, Horikita. I have no interest in clubs. I didn't even ask anything yet. Okay, then what? 
Are you going to participate in any clubs? Ayanoko Jikun. Do you have dementia? Or are you just an idiot? Didn't I say from the beginning that I have no interest in clubs? Just because you don't have any interest doesn't mean you won't participate. That's a frivolous argument. Don't make that kind of pointless talk. Okay. Poor Akita has no interest in clubs or making friends. Whenever I talk to her, she looks annoyed. I wonder if she came to this school just for the education or the high employment rate. It wouldn't be surprising if that was her only reason, but it seems unnatural. You really don't have any friends, I see. That's wrong. Now I can talk to you pretty well. You say that, but don't count me as one of your friends. All right, sure. Since you want to go see the clubs, do you intend to enter any clubs? No, I'm still thinking about it. I probably won't join one though. If you're not going to join a club, why are you going to the club fair? Strange. Are you using clubs as a pretext to make friends? How is she so smart? No, it's probably that I'm too easy to understand. Because I failed on the first day, clubs are my last chance to make any friends. Isn't it fine to invite anyone other than me? It's because I have no one else to invite that I'm having trouble. That's true. However, I don't think that Ayanoko Jikun seriously means the things you say. If you really wanted a friend, you'd probably talk more earnestly. Because that's not possible for me, I tread the path of loneliness. Horokita quietly resumed eating her sandwich. I can't really understand that kind of contradictory thinking. I want friends, but I can't make friends. It seems that Horokita couldn't understand that. Did you ever do any clubs? No. I have no experience in any clubs. Then do you have any experience with things outside of clubs? Oh, you're talking about something like this and that? What are you trying to say? I feel the malice behind your words. Malice? I didn't even tell you what I was referring to though. I received a chop to my side in a quick motion. I reflexively coughed from her unexpected strength. Hey, what was that for? Ayanoko Jikun. I've warned you already, but it seems like you don't listen to what I say. Remember that I'm capable of inflicting more pain than I just did. No violence. Violence doesn't solve anything. Really? Ever since the beginning of time, violence has existed because it is the most efficient way of resolving problems. It is the fastest way of either getting your point across to the other party or ignoring the other party's desires. After all, even countries employ police who use weapons and violence to arrest people, right? You sure talk a lot. She gave me a grand speech, asserting that she did nothing wrong. Whenever she made a remark, she would say absurd things and use it to viciously retort. From now on, I will use violence in order to fix the errors of your ways. How about it? How would you feel if I said the same thing to you? I wonder why they call men who raise their hand against a woman the lowest and cowardly. It doesn't matter because don't you think that'll never happen? After all, I never say something I shouldn't. That was an answer that came far out of left field. She seems to believe that she's never wrong. Even though she looks and acts in a civil manner, she's mean on the inside. I got it, I got it. I'll be really careful from now on. Giving up on inviting Horikita, I looked out the window. Ah, the weather's good today. Club activities, is it? I see. Horikita mumbled as she pondered over something. Only a bit after school is okay, right? I'll go with you. What do you mean by that? Didn't you say it yourself? That you wanted to go to the club fair? Oh, right. 